Consider supporting Archeosoup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to another Aspects of Archaeology. Now today we're going to be looking at amino acid racemization or racemization. What is that, I hear you cry? Well, it's a scientific observation that is very useful for archaeologists. If there's one thing that archaeologists do in addition to excavation, it's work on our dating techniques. No, not that sort of dating, though many of us would confess to needing as much help as we can possibly get. Hmm. Rather, I am referring to techniques which further our reach into the past, the ability to fill in any gaps in our dating abilities and make more objects useful for dating archaeological sites. It was early in the 1970s that a new exciting technique was developed. Amino acid racemization, as it was called, could reach much further back in time than radiocarbon dating. It relied upon observations of the change in amino acids in living organisms. This new technique was well received by archaeologists. A new way to date sites is always a good thing. So, amino acid racemization. Want to know how it works? Of course you do. Amino acid racemization can be used to date almost all living things. This is because it is based upon an observation of the amino acids that make up the proteins in all living things. As with many other methods, this dating technique depends on the observation of a change, a change which occurs over time after death. You see, amino acids are important and ubiquitous molecules in living things. Crucially, these molecules have two different ways of manifesting, a left and a right. These molecules are mirrors of each other, which when exposed to polarised light, twist it either to the left or to the right, and in this way, left and right can be observed through scientific observations. Now, crucially, Proteins in living organisms contain only left-handed amino acid molecules. This ratio begins to change once the organism dies. With exceptions such as teeth and the lenses of eyes, right-handed molecules are only found in dead organisms. So, over time, after death, the ratio of right-handed and left-handed molecules begins to change, and bit by bit there will be more and more right-handed molecules. And thus we can date the specimen. There are certain caveats, however. This process is extremely sensitive to ambient temperature and air pressure. However, radiocarbon dating can be used to estimate the rate of change on a given site. And with this estimate, we can reach much further back in time than radiocarbon dating alone could do. Thus, amino acid racemization is very useful for archaeologists. A fascinating technique, I'm sure you'll agree. Here are some instances where it's been put to good use. The Clazies Rivermouth Caves are an archaeological site located in the eastern Cape province of South Africa. These caves were originally investigated in the mid to late 1960s. The archaeologists involved were eager to take advantage of the new technique of amino acid racemization, As they had found human remains which were potentially extraordinarily old, they decided to observe a very particular amino acid aspartic acid, shown here. Using radiocarbon dating to calibrate, they ascertained that the racemization rate over 18,000 years had been a ratio of 0.167. They applied this rate to the human remains and extrapolated a date of between 90 and 110,000 years old. Such dates are way beyond the range of radiocarbon dating and are crucial for understanding when and where we came from. Next we examine a site in the south and east of southern Australia, Robe Range Midden. In the early 1990s, archaeologists were excavating an Aboriginal midden on the coast. The midden had notably different species of shellfish present in different layers. Towards the bottom of the midden was the species Catalysia. 
These were dated using amino acid racemization to around 7,000 years ago, and revealed that at this time Aboriginal people were taking advantage of this intertidal cockle in a sheltered lagoon. Towards the top of the midden was a different species entirely, the so-called turbo. These were dated using amino acid racemization to around 800 years ago and revealed a second period of Aboriginal occupation, taking advantage of what was now a rugged coastline. In this way, eating habits, occupation periods, and the evolution of a coastline were understood through this dating technique. In a previous video, we were introduced to Christchurch in Spitalfields, London, England. You may recall that this site was special because of its crypt, which contained many coffins. On some of these coffins were nameplates, naming the individual inside, their age, and the year they died. On this site, and others, such as the Blackgate Cemetery in Newcastle, amino acid racemization was used to estimate the age of the individual in the coffin, not when they died, but how old they are, or were. Usually, human remains on archaeological sites are made up of skeletons, bones, and teeth. And though bones may date a burial, teeth are very special. Dentists and archaeologists alike have an excellent understanding of how teeth develop in the mouth, from teething right through to having a full set of gnashes. From that point on, amino acid racemization can be used to date the dentine in teeth, which begins to accumulate right-handed amino acids as soon as it's formed. Spittle Fields was an exercise which showed that so long as you keep your teeth, archaeologists can estimate how old you were when you died. Physical indicators of age, such as tooth wear or wear on the skeleton, are different from person to person. Amino acid racemization revolutionized the aging of skeletons. So that's amino acid racemization. Uh, it may sound a bit intimidating or dry at first, but it's actually a fascinating uh, technique and observation and uh, a wonderful way to date um, archaeological material, which sometimes people may have dismissed um, in the past or previously as being undateable. Um, there are, of course, um, as, I, as I have highlighted, caveats. You have to be very careful in terms of your calibration, where you get your calibrated material from. And also, the, there are, of course, as with any dating technique, certain assumptions. This one being um, that uh, the ambient temperature remains relatively constant, if not uh, at an average, over time. Uh, but given these, uh, these caveats, this is uh, a dating technique which does fill in um, certain periods of time which, for example, radiocarbon dating can't reach. And, uh, and it's been put to great use in the field of ageing skeletons, which, um, once all your teeth are in, um, can actually be very difficult uh, based upon, you know, if you're just going on um, subjective things such as tooth wear analysis or wear and tear on bones and joints. So this technique um, is, is very useful uh, but should be used and is always used uh, with, with the right amount of precautions and caveats in place. Um, useful but not for the faint-hearted as it were. So that's been amino acid racemization. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to comment below or send me a message or send me an email to archaeosoup at gmail.com. Of course, if you found this interesting uh, or useful, feel free to subscribe. Just push the button above and you, you shall receive videos from Archaeosoup from here on in. Uh, we do, of course, have, have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. Uh, if you go to Facebook and search for Archaeosoup Productions and click like, anything that doesn't make it onto the uh, YouTube or the website, indeed, uh, will make it onto uh, the Facebook page. And, of course, the Facebook page is uh, updated concurrently with the Twitter account, which is at Archaeosoup, with soup spelt with a zero. And we have now Archaeosoup.com, a wonderful website which is a hub for all things Archaeosoupish. So go and check that out if and when you want to. Uh, so thank you very much for watching once again and until next time, bye bye. Well, just in case they blow off. <laughs> You're all right. Yes. Come on.